Does the mere thought of getting on a stage in front of other human beings leave you quaking in your boots? Is public speaking for you the same as a superpower? Like, are Captain America, the Hulk, and, I don't know, Tony Stark, all their superhero-level abilities for you the same as (laughs) the ability that it would take to get you on the stage? Well, my friend, if that is you, then today's episode is just for you. I am talking to all my flourishing entrepreneur peeps that have stage fright, that don't feel confident taking to the stage, that when they think of hopping on the stage, they would literally rather die, just die. (laughs) Today, I'm going to give you tangible tips for breaking through stage fright, getting on the stage so you can share your story in a confident way because, and if I've said it once, I will say it again, your story deserves to be heard. Your intelligence, the way that you want to communicate, what you want to communicate, all of it deserves to be heard, but it can't if you don't get on the stage. So let us buzz through some stage fright, but boom, 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 just like superheroes today. (laughs) All right, let's go. Welcome to the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast with Alea Harris. If you're looking for actionable ways to overcome communication and differentiation challenges by sharing radically authentic stories, you are in the right place. Listen in and learn how to stand in the power of your unique narrative to transform your personal life, business, and workplace culture. And now, your host, award-winning international speaker, strategic storytelling consultant, and Japanese whiskey lover, Ruby Coral's mom, Alea Harris. Today, we are diving deep into a topic that is near and dear to my heart because it's near and dear to the hearts of almost every Spark the Stage student that I have had the pleasure of working with. Stage fright. (laughs) If overcoming stage fright and owning the spotlight are on your to-do list, then guess what? Let's dive in because you are in the right place. If the thought of stepping onto a stage makes your palms sweat, you are not alone. We're going to tackle this fear together and turn it into unstoppable confidence. So first, let's talk about what stage fright actually is. So it is an anxiety response, sometimes feels like a panic attack, but it really just isn't about nerves. Oh, I just have some nerves, just some jitters. I need to shake off the jitters. It's really a cocktail of anxiety, fear of judgment, and self-doubt. It feels like everyone's eyes are laser-focused on you, and they can see every single flaw. They're hearing every single um. They do not have any grace for any imperfections for you on the stage. If you aren't perfect, they might actually come after you with pitchforks, calling your name and chanting for you to be thrown into the sea. Okay, maybe that last part was a little dramatic, but that's how it feels, right? And again, I say that it's anxiety, fear of judgment, and self-doubt. And we're going to talk about the three of those together because those are all solvable problems. I don't care if you have been trying to be a public speaker for years, just forcing yourself, I'm just going to get up and do it is not going to help. And it doesn't help anybody that I know. So this is actually a horrible topic for me to talk about because I don't really have stage fright, at least not when it comes to speaking. However, I did used to have stage fright when I was a tap dancer. (laughs) Fun fact, the melodious voice that you're listening to right now was actually a state champion dab dancer with my crew, with my crew, Dwayne Dance. Shout out to my Dwayne Dancers from Hayward, California. (laughs) I remember that when I would get up on the stage to tap dance, 
I felt like everything was wrong with me. My brain was going to go blank. I was always super tall. I'm 5'10 now, and I've been this height since the eighth grade. And I was like, I'm going to stand out. Everybody else is better than me. I was black. So, I mean, I still am black. (laughs) Just in case you were wondering, (laughs) that part didn't change. I was and am black. And most of the people I was tapping with were white. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to stand out and I'm going to be the only one they're going to see if a mistake was made. And I felt that like everyone's eyes were focused on me. But this is where it came from. And I wonder if you can relate whether you're tap dancing or not. It came from anxiety. So I had uh, fears that were not real. I'm going to disappoint my teacher. And my mom has spent a lot of money for this. I'm going to disappoint my mom. She's going to be mad at me. I'm going to disappoint myself. And all of those fears. I'm going to fall off the stage. I'm going to be booed off. But my friends that I'm dancing with are not going to like me. They're going to make fun of me. They're- None of those things had ever happened. I had the most supportive teacher ever, Sharon Kitchen. I loved her. My mom is the most supportive mother ever. I still love her and get to hang out with her. She's I'm a big fan. And the people that I tap danced with were super nice. They were supportive. It was not like some like dance movie, like weird drama. No, there was none of that. So the anxiety was related and based in fear, false expectations appearing real. The more I was able to confront those unrealistic fears, the more I was able to say, this is actually not like a thing. This is not how this works. Like none of this is real. I'm making all of this up. I need to live in the real world, not in this crazy pants world that I've invented for myself. And it's because it's not very fun there living in that crazy pants world. The next thing was fear of judgment from the audience. I don't care what you think about high school tap dancers. If you had asked me as a high school tap dancer, I would have told you that on that stage, I was doing God's work. (laughs) I was... (laughs) this was the most important thing this state fair performance that I was ever gonna do in my life and if I didn't win over the crowd boy howdy was life over and tap dancing the way we did it was precision tap like you think of like 42nd street broadway so it was like any sound that was off you could hear it any arm that was out of place out of the right angle you could hear it you could see it And again, it was fear of judgment, fear what other people thought. I was no longer thinking about how much I loved it, how much I had mastered a new skill, how much I was excited to show off what I learned, how much I was excited to be one of the best tap dancers in my state, at least in my age group, right? I wasn't thinking about the joy it would give to people, the little kids who (laughs) would be in the audience tip tap tapping their feet on the ground in no rhyme or reason because they looked up to us and how inspiring I was and how inspired I was by their joy. No, 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 no. I was consumed by they're going to judge me and who they were and what power they had over me. I didn't know. And I didn't explore that. But if I had, I would have realized that the judgment didn't matter, but the passion did. But I would have leaned more into the passion and realized that it wasn't really about me and all the things that they were going to figure out of me. But it was about the experience and how I was a part of a larger experience. And then there was the third thing that I talked about, self-doubt. Self-doubt comes from a lack of clarity. I love dancing. I love singing. I love dancing. And I love choreographed dancing. But learning choreography takes me some time. And it takes me probably shorter than other people since like I've spent years and years as a dancer. But longer than it took like the other dancers I was big kicking it with, right? So I found myself kind of like skipping through parts and like, no, I got this and fudging through that. And and I wasn't as clear as I needed to be. I hadn't developed the learning devices that I needed to do to develop to make sure that I was crystal clear on what was happening, when was it happening. And I always felt one step behind. I always felt like I was the worst person in class because I didn't allow myself the time to get the clarity I needed. I was not a natural tap dancer. Ask Sharon Kitchen. 
She'll tell you. God, was that woman patient with me. (laughs) I was not a natural tap dancer, but I did work really hard. Not probably as hard as I should have, to be honest with you. Probably could have practiced more. Sorry, Sharon. But I was someone who knew how to get the clarity, but it was almost too embarrassed to slow the process down to get the clarity I needed. If I had gotten clarity, there would have been no doubt. I would have been so sure in what I was doing that it wouldn't have mattered if I felt like, oh, I was nervous or this or that, because I knew that no matter what, I knew the steps I was going to kill it. Right. But I didn't really know that. I didn't really own that. And that was the root of self doubt when I was a tap dancer. And truthfully, that's the root of most people's self doubt when they get on the stage. I'm sure you've heard stories of Taylor Swift and Beyonce practicing months and months and months. Like, what was it that? I'm sorry, Beehive, if I'm getting this wrong. I think that for Beyonce's like famed Coachella performance, she practiced like eight months or nine months and the performance is like an hour and a half, right? They knew that they needed to practice so much that it became part of their autonomic nervous system. They were not focused on, oh, am I going to get this? Or what's the next step? Or what's the next word? Or what's my next cue? What's my next light? They knew that they knew that they knew that they knew it. And that is the basis of confidence, knowledge, lack of doubt. Beating anxiety, beating fear of judgment, and beating doubt are all within your control because they're all happening inside of you. No one's doing these things to you. Even if you do have like a nasty Nancy that is in your circle somewhere and like feeding these self-doubts to you, you can overcome nasty Nancy by overcoming what's happening inside of your head. When I began to systematically, I think over the years really, face my anxiety, my fear of judging, my self-doubt. By the time I got on stage and gave my first speaking engagement, (laughs) could nobody tell me nothing, baby. Baby, could nobody tell me nothing. Because I had put in the work, whether it was tap dancing or opening my mouth, I wasn't anxious. I knew I was there to serve. I knew exactly what I was going to say, how I was going to say, what I wanted to say. And I looked amazing doing it. Oh my goodness. Right? That's why people, when I get on stage, people are like, oh my God, I want to do what you do. How do you do that? And then they usually, (laughs) they usually like just point at all of me. How do you do that? All of you, that. And I'm telling you, it's by realizing and recognizing your fears, owning up that you need to be of service and it really isn't about you, and getting clear on what the heck you're doing and knowing it backwards and forwards. And I will say now that I'm a speaker and I know a little bit more, it's about channeling. So when you're in a group and you're tap dancing, you can channel the energy and allow yourself to channel from spirit how to, you know, get some guidance. But there's no improvisation because especially with precision tap, you got to match, right? Like think of like synchronized swimming, like one swimmer, swimmer can't be, just be like, I want to go rogue and do the watutsi in the water. Like that's not going to work. Same thing with precision tap. But when you're in a speaker and you're on stage, it's a whole new glorious level that gets opened up when you get to channel from spirit, your higher self, what I like to call your radically authentic self, to match exactly what that audience needs at any given time. And it takes the pressure off of you because you know that you're there as an open channel and you're feeding in exactly what you need to be to be of the highest good in that moment, which should be your goal as a public speaker. So I've told you the three things. I told you how to overcome them. The elements of stage fright are overcomable. Yes, overcomable is a word. Just in case you're wondering, it is now a word as of right now. Change approved. Overcomable is a word. And if you want to do that, I'm going to give you some more tangible techniques to be able to step onto a stage and step onto a spotlight and share your story. The first is visualization and visualizing specifically your ideal scene. (sighs) There's so many, many, many books on this. So visualization, working with the power of your subconscious mind, working with the power of the universe, manifestation, all of it is really talking about the same thing. 
You can read Think and Grow Rich, which I'm actually currently rereading. And man, that's a charged book, char- energetically charged. You can feel it. Like I'm not, it's not one of those books that you can just like zip through. It's one of those books where I'm like reading like a page at a time and, I'm, and then I get an, uh, an idea and I'm inspired and action. I got to take this note. I got to write this thing. I got to haul this person based on that book. So if you haven't read Think and Grow Rich, it is written by an old white guy. But you know what? If you're not an old white guy listening, and you don't already have these cheat codes. Um, just in case you're wondering, I am not an old white guy. Um, why not go to the people that actually have been successful with this, right? Like he, this is an old white guy who went and interviewed a whole bunch of all old rich white guys about how they became rich, not how they became old and white, but how they became rich. And a lot of it is basically programming your subconscious. So that's thinking grow rich. Another one, as you may know, if this is not your first episode is asking it is given by Abraham Hicks, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. That is, then there's a power of the mind by John Kehoe. So there's so many, 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 many books, but the bottom line is you are a powerful creator. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Let me say that from my diaphragm, because I don't think you believed me when I said it the first time. Give me a second. <clears throat> you are a powerful creator. Or, or. <laughs> don't you like my analog sound effect? I'm saying it again, and I'm saying it in a deeper voice (laughs) for you to really understand that it's worth pausing to think about what that means. It means that for better or for worse, mind you, there's responsibility in this, for better or for worse, you have created everything that you've gone through. The illness, the car accident, the lots of money, the little bit of money, the kids, the what you attract, the happiness you have, the money you have, all of it you have created by the thoughts you think and the feelings that you have. That's the baseline of any type of manifestation to which you are probably thinking, what the hell am I thinking about? That's a good, that's a good, good, good question, my friend. What are you thinking about? Because whatever you're thinking about and however you're feeling about it and however you're thinking about it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, that is what you are doing to build your life. So if you're thinking when you about getting on stage, oh my God, I could never, I could never get on stage. People are going to look at me. I'm too fat. I'm too short. They put on some weight. I don't really have the clothes and I don't really have the right makeup. And I don't know. Well, have you seen my hair? Have you seen the on and on and on and on? If that is you, then of course you're not getting on stage because what you're doing, whether you know it or not, is you're visualizing a scene that is not an ideal scene. You're visualizing and embedding into your subconscious mind the scene of failure. And your subconscious mind is obligated to move everything that it can come hell, high, hell or high water to bring whatever you are imprinting into your subconscious to life. So it is bringing failure to you as a very dedicated and loyal servant of you and your life. So if you don't want that, then you need to visualize something different and you need to do it with regularity and with feeling. Visualize yourself stepping onto the stage with confidence. Picture the audience applauding and hanging on your every word. Picture yourself feeling elated. Picture yourself feeling that that thickness. I don't know how to describe it. The thickness in the air in the room, knowing that spirit is there with you. Picture yourself feeling a little buzzy, a little tingly, knowing that you are in the vein, you are saying the right words, you're having the right effect, the right impact on your audience. Picture that. Picture the confidence that you feel, that every word is coming out exactly how it's supposed to, and you feel confident even when the words you're saying are not what you plan, but you know that they are the right words. What I'm telling you to do is to picture your success Implant that in your subconscious and allow your subconscious to bring that to pass for you and for on your behalf. When you're able to do that, you will be positioned for success because you'll start giving yourself different instructions. If you put into chat GPT, tell me a, a, a story about failure. It's going to tell you a story about failure. If you put into chat GPT, tell me a story about success. It's going to tell you about a story about success. You shouldn't pick your, you shouldn't assume and expect it to do the opposite. 
your brain is very similar. So tell yourself your story of success and it will tell you back a story of success via the inspired action that you take to help get yourself there. As you start telling yourself more stories of success, you might say, hey, I actually maybe should jot some notes down about a keynote I have, or hey, maybe I should jot some stories down, or hey, maybe I should, shameless plug, go sign up for Alea's Spark the Stage class at aleaharris.com slash spark, or maybe, spoiler alert, I should go and get Alea's book, Alea's book, Alea's book is coming now on September 19th. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't have commercials, so like, I thought that if I did like a little song with it, It'd be kind of like a commercial break. Did it work? Do you think so? No? Okay. Anyways, so you might get inspired to take just the next right step. And then as you continue to talk yourself into your own success, you continue to take steps in the right direction. And lo and behold, one day you're going to find yourself standing on that stage, feeling amazing, feeling the buzz, hearing the words come out of your mouth that are the exact right words. And you're going to be like, hot damn. I did it. Why don't you look at that? I had that experience. It wasn't about the confidence to be on stage, but it was about the money that I got paid to be there and the feeling that it was going to be when I got there and I got the money and I got the feeling and I had my own hot damn moment on stage because I had been visualizing it and golly, didn't it make that moment even sweeter. So the first technique and tip I have for you to overcome stage fright is to first create your ideal scene, write it down a couple of sentences. It needs to be in present tense and you need to control yourself, not anybody else and visualize it daily, twice daily, however often you need to until it becomes part of you, naturally part of you. Just uh, a little bit of a shameless plug in my book, I teach you step-by-step how to do this. All right, moving on to number two, breathing exercises and relaxation techniques. So I fell in love with an app. (laughs) I fell in love with my husband and then I fell in love with an app after that. Um, It's called Hypnotherapy Breathwork. And actually the app is called Mastery, M-A-S-T-R-Y, no E. And it is about breathing and hypnosis and visualization all in one. I love that because it helps me clear my subconscious from all of those limiting beliefs. It also helps ground me in the present moment and I'm able to take inspired action afterwards. So deep breathing can be done in advance to help with that manifestation techniques to help clear out the subconscious. It can also be done right before. So inhaling to the count of seven, holding for a count of three, exhaling to a count of nine. Oh my gosh, doing that right before you get on stage when those nerves hit, priceless, priceless gold, priceless gold. You repeat that until you feel grounded. Exercises like that can help calm you and your nervous system and focus your mind because you'll be able to refocus on the fact that you absolutely belong there. You belong on that stage and you are going to help someone. Don't rob them of your ability to help because you are nervous. The third thing I have for you touches on to that clarity bit. It is practice. Practice and preparation, but not overly practicing and not overly preparing. The way that I prepare is by being an expert. (laughs) That sounds like some bull crap, doesn't it? (laughs) It's the truth, though. So I can always, always, always tell. When I'm at a conference and someone is giving a workshop or a keynote or a breakout session, usually not a keynote because usually the keynotes are actual experts, usually a breakout session, where someone has taken somebody else's course or has read one or two books and is now regurgitating that information, but they are not themselves an expert. You become an expert through lived experience by either doing it and experiencing it yourself, helping other people through it with clients, having testimonials, moving through the process. Your own hero's journey makes you an expert to help other people's hero's journey. So when I'm on stage, the best way for me to prepare is just to know my Crap. I'm really, I'm trying not to put the explicit label on this, on this episode. So I keep having to catch myself because I'm in a little bit of a sweary mood right now. And I don't know why. So far, so good. And I haven't dropped any F-bombs. So hopefully you're still with me. When I 
work every single day with clients as a strategic storytelling consultant, when I work as a business coach, when I myself am on stage, I am gaining the expertise that I need to be able to share my stories from stage. When I went through postpartum depression, when I went through horrible financial trauma, when I went through my daddy issues, I was gaining the expertise I needed to be able to help somebody else go through it. Nothing replaces your own experience. And that includes practice. Because no matter how rehearsed you are, if you're talking about a topic that you only have a superficial knowledge of, it will come across that way and you will not have the impact that you want to have. You don't need to go out and find a topic that you are an expert in. You are already an expert in something. Go inside and figure out what that is. Are you a resiliency expert? Are you an organization expert? Are, even if your, your industry is not like you're an organization professional, but let's say that you are, your color coding, your sticky notes, and your label maker are so on point. Whew. Other people are like, how do you do that? How are you so organized? You can always find everything. You always know exactly what to do and where to go, right? If you, I don't know, are a marketer and you want to bring your organization system to the world of marketing and to marketers so that they can be better at their jobs, the world is wide open for you. You don't have to pretend to be an SEO expert. You don't. You really, really, really don't. You just need to be an expert in what you truly are an expert in. And when you truly are an expert in something, it shows. Then yes, you create slides, you make them simple and easy to understand so that you can flow as you need to. And then you embrace how your expertise needs to show up in that moment. You need to be prepared so that you know what's coming. You're not surprised by your own slides. But this is not a TED Talk. A keynote, a breakout session is not memorized and should not be memorized. Your job is to be of service and to connect. Confidence comes from knowing your material inside and out. But your material is not just what's on the slide. Your material material is your expertise. And that's what I want you to know inside and out. If you feel like you don't know it inside and out, you shouldn't be talking about it. But there's so much that you know. There's so much lived experience that you have. There's so many moments that just that one moment of clarity after the moment of struggle is what you could build an entire speaking career on. So don't let the things you've tried to be or the expertise you've tried to have throw you off. Go deeper and show up in a more authentic way, and you will feel more confident. That leads me into my fourth and final piece of advice here, which is to embrace your authenticity. My whole thing is about finding your radically authentic self and letting that radically authentic self guide you, your presentation, and the audience. Your radically authentic self is the part that understands, the part that knows, the part that always has known and knows right now and will know, the part that guides you, the omnipotent part, the omnipresent part, the wise part, the one that has all the answers, the one that can never lead you astray, that part of you. When you allow yourself, your true self to shine, you're not worried about how other people perceive you because you realize that exactly how you are, exactly how you're showing up in that moment, you are perfect. And what you look like, what you sound like is exactly what other people need to see, what other people need to experience right now to have their transformation, what this is all about. Authenticity not only alleviates your fear, but it also creates a genuine connection with your audience. A genuine connection that puts butts in seats. Genuine connection gets you paid more. Genuine connection allows people to have transformations that you could never have from something that you felt was superficial to you because it's going to feel superficial to them. So rehearse, get some mindfulness practices in, be able to reach your authentic self. I'm adding this on the checklist, like, just so like you don't notice, buy my book, (laughs) my book, Spark the Stage. It is, it's something that you're really going to like because I have spent the better part of, of my career really coming up with these stories and adding them to the book, Spark the Stage, Mastering the Art of Professional Speaking and Authentic Storytelling. It is out on September 19th. Become a confident professional speaker. Capture 
the attention of your audience, share your authenticity with the world so that you don't let self-doubt keep you from the spotlight. And you can discover how to turn your life experiences into a compelling message that captivates, motivates, and leaves a lasting impact. I am helping you overcome fear, inspire audiences, and become the confident and authentic public speaker you've dreamed of becoming. So go ahead. After September 19th, you can go to leahharris.com and buy the book. You can also get it on Amazon as well. If you don't want to wait for the book, you can sign up for the course, Spark the Stage, which gives you the everything that's in the book, except you also get me. I know I'm selling myself. I am. And I'm not ashamed of it. I am not ashamed of it. You get to ask me questions. You get to say, am I doing this right? You get to show me your presentation and say, is this story making any sense? You can do that at aleaharris.com slash spark and go ahead and sign up today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you feel like you can be more confident that you have a path forward. It's not just, oh, I'm going to not be nervous anymore. Now, now you have some powerful techniques to tackle stage fright from visualization and breathing exercises to embracing your radically authentic self. And I want you to remember that stage fright is something that a lot of people face. You are not alone, but the right tools and mindset can transform all of that into a powerful asset. Because that same energy that's making you nervous, if you can channel that into something more positive, you will be unstoppable. Remember, you've got this. I believe in you. Your story is valuable and your voice deserves to be heard. Don't let fear hold you back from sharing it. If you liked this episode and you want to dive deeper again, check out my book, Spark the Stage and my Spark the Stage course. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast. My name is Alea Harris. This is the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast. And I'm sending you, as always, lots of love, light, and abundance. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast with Alea Harris. Vibing with what you hear? Leave a five-star review to spread the love and be sure to click subscribe. We wish you love, light, and abundance. See you next time.